Ron here from the hit podcast, The Other Side of Wall Street. And if you're like most of us here in the trading community, you no doubt have mentors or experts that you look up to for trading advice and knowledge. Well, how many times have you wished you could just sit down with one of those experts and have a good old one-on-one -on -one conversation with no script, no planned questions, just a friendly chat? Well, that's what we're bringing to you here. Each week, we'll visit with a different expert and have an up-close and personal conversation about anything and everything involving trading. So sit back and enjoy as we get to know our special guest. Yep. And what I say is less is more, is right. that that's one of the big things I've noticed when traders mature, um, they start taking a lot less trades. We need to work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's something where there's nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. That's one of the bigger things is that you, if you're back into this ego thing as you were talking about, your performance, what happens is winning is proving right. your value as a human being. Right. And that is, that is just the worst thing in the world to give to the trading gods. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, oh, man, because uh, it's all random. And, you know, what you're doing is you're using what we would call your rules, you know, or your standard practices. You're laying your standard practices over the randomness of the markets, and it's looking for – it's looking for patterns that may or may not occur and may not fulfill or may just, and what you're doing is that literally you've got the standard practice. And as long as you stand to those standard practices, you have an edge. Right. Hence your trading plan. Yeah, that's your trading plan. And the moment that you wiggle out of that, that's where we were talking about earlier is that that's when you start gambling. Mm -hmm. And, it's the emotional discipline and the patience that comes out of it that really defines a really great trader. And, and, you know, and it's really more about recognizing that eternal vigilance is the price of freedom is you constantly have to be maintaining and just checking out to see if your mind's right to, to being able to manage the uncertainty rather than getting a feel and start going in different directions. But can you manage that mind? And that, that's why, um, for me, I like to see traders uh, take breaks, hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I like to see them take, um, I like to see them do check-ins with themselves over 10 or 15 minutes to find out if they're getting revved up. If, you know, they have to learn how to read themselves. And they, every, it's very important for them to move out of the activity of trading for a while because that is, um, if you were to take a look at what the brain's going through when you're using all that cognitive function, it is, uh, your brain is like a, uh, a 1965 GTO. <laughs> it's got 400 horsepower, and even at idle, it's going, <laughs> and it's sucking fuel like crazy. And the moment that that glucose, and that's the fuel, glucose, is that after you've traded for an hour, at the very tops, an hour and a half, you've pretty much drained the tank. Right. And once you've drained the tank, you need to be doing an activity that does not require cognition. Because mm -hmm. that the reason you and I are not strong, say like our other eight relatives, is because our brain takes up so much of the energy. And we have to learn to really um, use it well and to say, I know I need to rest it, I need to refuel it, and I need to I need to be able to make sure that I that the emotions that I'm in are giving rise to the mind that can do the best job of working with probability. And it's a it it's it's so teachable. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say would be the proper order for beginning traders? And what I mean by that is I've tried teaching the psych psychology part psychological part of it at the beginning of my classes before I taught the technicals of the classes I've tried teaching it at the end of the class after I've taught them you know the mechanics of it but as far as a trader actually goes if they say if they took your course right before they ever started trading I don't know that they could appreciate what's coming up but so 
where, how, you know, how much trading, how much failure, how much problems do they have to have before they can appreciate what you offer or someone like you? So where, how do the timing well, and the people? Yeah, first of all, the people that I work with generally have at least two to five years worth of uh, experience, and they have uh, they've been trading live, and they see that there there is a difference between paper trading and live trading. Definitely, yeah. And they and they recognize that their mind's not standing up there. Mm -hmm. An ideal situation would be where uh, a trader trainer is training a person. And then they get to the moment of where they're risking capital. It's that risking capital that turns everything. That, that's literally, and once they begin to see that when you risk capital and you have this tort, short time frame, and the, the outcome's uncertain, they start feeling the historical biology and you'll feel that before the psychology, mm -hmm. okay? So for me, the ideal place, and it would depend on how far along you are in it, but it's, it's literally when they move from tra paper trading, and I look at it as paper trading is a good way to make sure that you have a trading plan right. and you can use it. Right. You can't necessarily use it under pressure, mm -hmm. but the thing is, is you're familiar with it. You don't, you're not all thumbs. Right. You, you're actually demonstrating that in a, in, a, in, a, in a video game world, I can, I can make money, and now I know I'm going to be moving into live trading. Mm -hmm. And it's at that live trading after they take some losses, that's when they become available if, and available for training for, and I would actually call it emotional regulation more than just psychology. Um, I, I think trader psychology is, uh, you know, I, I look at psychology and I recognize that it comes out of emotions. Right. Okay. And the real key is what emotions automatically trigger when you engage uncertainty. That's, that's the big deal. But if you get them at the point of where they're feeling the, you know, that the, 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 the risk, that's when trader psychology is best taught. And of course, as we know, that probably 90% of all beginning traders fail and give up, walk away. Oh, 95. 90, whatever. High, high yeah, number. lots, lots. I mean, it's so obviously the majority never realize that's the problem at the, or that there's a solution or that there's a way, uh, another avenue to go. And that's the sad part. Oh, I'll tell you, I was talking to a guy today from Italy. And he's a Forex trader and all this kind of stuff. And... He was saying, yeah, and I, I see these, you know, I see all these things and I see how much money other people are making. And I said, how do you know they're making money? Mm -hmm. He says, I see their cars. I see their boats. I see their airplanes. I said, those are just pictures. <laughs> how do you know they're making money? Mm -hmm. And I said, tell me something. Do they have audited financial statements indicating their performances? Mm -hmm. Or if you're working with a really good training guy, what he's doing is he's being very honest that you don't win all the trades. And he's, he's showing you, and he will use his own trades when mistakes are made to be able to teach. And But the thing is, is that now this guy's saying, oh, yeah, they're making money because they have all these things. And I said, well, you know, several years ago, I was, um, this Russian approached me. Golly, I'm going to show my. I'm going to show. I'm going to show you one of my cognitive biases here, and uh, and what happens? Approached us and wanted to work with us, and the main thing is that they wanted our list. I said, well, I'm not willing to give you my list under any circumstances. However, we can exchange webinars, and you know, whoever shows up, then you can get those names, and we'll just test it that way. And so we did this stuff, and I'm I'm doing a webinar with her group and all of a sudden what happens is my wife says this is really weird randy i think these are all bots mm. i had 300 bots and they all had russian names okay and i and i, I realized well they're not moving they're not doing this you know because our you know our uh our our 
you know, our screens tell us interest. They, they have logarithms telling us interest and stuff like that. I said, this is weird. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, my God. And this woman had pictures of herself in front of yachts and airplanes and all this kind of stuff. Same stuff. And it's kind of like a, you know, you're, you're you know, finding good teachers is, is not easy to begin with. And then, you know, learning from a really good trader is not easy either because you have to, you know, you, you come to a moment of where can I do what the master's doing before I start hamming it up and changing things? Mm-hmm. Can, can I replicate what the master's doing? But, uh, yeah, I, I, to, again, for me, it's that moment where they know how to trade and they're, they're shown live trading, and they recognize there's a whole other world here that they have to learn. To me, that's where, that's where trading psychology would be very useful in, in, a, in a, a course of study. Have you and found it, that, 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 that that policy is something that you can sell and promote to people, or do they have to figure it out the hard way and come looking for you? Oh, the, the way it currently works is people find out the hard way and come to me. I thought, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, um, and I, th- I just think it's part of the um, – the way trading is set up is that it's going to cost money to, tr- uh, to train psychology, okay? And then you start looking at it going, well – you know, I can train this section and I do pretty good and I can talk psychology and these guys should have enough. When in fact, you know, most of my work is retraining the body and you're even re, you're training the body to get a new mind. Mm-hmm. And I, and I recognize that this is all biology we're talking about. And it's just that it's, it's created a mind that can, look at itself. It's just, it's just like the craziest thing in the world. But the, um, I have tried and, and, and both sides were, were party of trying to say, how can you put these two together? And the, the stickling point has always been money. Right. Uh, and I understand it. And um, I, I gave up on really pursuing that about five years ago and realized that it's just not the way the game's organized and that um, traders are going to come to a moment of where they're well-trained uh, technically, but that's not enough. No, no. no anyone, anyone can do that. Anyone can yeah. learn. Anybody can learn that. And, um, and I've just discovered that uh, it's just kind of like um, I watched a, uh, a special on Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain. And he was just absolutely obsessed with getting wit, uh, rich quick and going to the uh, going to the gold fields and almost died a number of times because, you know, just the extreme conditions and the dangerous people that they were exposing them down to. And what you discover is that he was conniving when he was when he was uh, when he was going after that money. And ultimately, what happened is that uh, somebody gave him a paycheck for writing an article. And he looked at it and says, I'm rich. (laughs) And he realized that his avenue to maybe not getting rich quick, but being able to generate capital was not through getting rich quick with finding a goal and striking it and all that kind of good stuff. Because, like I said, it almost killed him couple times there's some ruthless people out there you know so i guess maybe to, to start wrapping this up uh yeah how would you any any advice tips uh, for beginning traders that okay you're going down this path when when are you going to what are you going to look for to realize that it's more that we need help in your area not in how to construct the trade, how to, how to place the trade, how to, where to put your stop. Well, what I'd say, the first thing is I'm looking for a person to be well-trained. Um, Before I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many people I'll work with and what they discover 
halfway into the course they discover into my work, they'll discover that they really don't have a system that has an edge. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm looking for a trader to be well-trained first. So I'm, I'm not against you guys. I understand I want, I, I'm looking for really ethical people who want to train traders so that they're well-trained. Mm -hmm. From there, when you start recognizing, it doesn't take long. You, you just start risking capital and you get past the micro stuff and you start, you know, you start doing some contracts and uh, you see, you know, um, I mean, I know guys who, when they trade and lose $25, it rips them up. You know, I know people at $200, it rips them up. But the thing is, is when you see that, you go, okay, this is where, you know, it, to continue doing that is just training the limbic brain that this is trauma and it's going to try to stop you from getting in. That's so, what happens. So your definition of well-trained is via paper trading, right? Yeah. Um, well, well, you know, the thing is, is uh, it, it's to me the transition of when you move from paper trading in an organized educational system and you run into, you run into uncertainty risk under stress. That's the piece because you're never going to learn uncertainty, risk, and stress paper trading. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, yeah, there's like, a reset button. Yeah, that, but yeah. the moment that you hit it, that's when that's when the training can occur. So yeah, I'm looking for a person well trained and who can paper trade. I know that I know they have an edge and I know what's missing is their head. Mm -hmm. That that I can that that to me is ideal. And see what I find is is that so many beginners start and burn out, blow up their account before they ever they can't get to the point to where they're well trained enough to know that they need like your help it all happens too quick and too soon so it, it just, it's just they're doomed from the beginning and they never make it far enough to ever come out the other side of the tunnel there will be blood yeah and, and that that's yeah. my goal i keep trying to figure out it, it must be a way that we that i can figure out some method of nurturing them along or something until so that they, they can get all this down it took Samuel Clemens almost being killed, okay, to wake up and to realize that he could write stuff, make a lot of money, and not have to kill himself, okay? And uh, there, are, um, there are lots of people who are not going to listen. They're, they're going to go for the money. They're going to go for get rich quick. And there's nothing that you and I are going to do anything about it. And there's going to be blood. I mean, even and, on YouTube, your videos, other videos about psychology, the numbers of, of views they have versus some of the ones that teach you how to, you know, do this trade or that trade and make, make a fortune overnight, you know, millions and millions of views. So everybody's gravitating to the get rich yes, quickly. they are. You know, yeah. and, and they're skipping right over the stuff that's going to make or break them. Um. That goes back to the cognitive biases. They, you know, it is literally they have a tunnel vision. They're saying that I can get rich quick. And, you know, the thing is you can tell them there's only about 2% of traders who actually are consistently profitable and make really good money. Mm -hmm. This 5% that's profitable, a lot of them are marginal. Yeah. And then you go, what business would you get in if you knew that only about 2% we're going to, going to really make good money. Mm -hmm. There's there's easier ways of making money. Right. Yet they don't see that, and they don't think they they don't think that um, they have a bulletproof raincoat, and they go out and you're hoping that when once they blow up one, two, three, four, five accounts, you're hoping that they have capital. But uh, I, I get it all the time on, on my YouTube channel. People just, uh, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is easy. I read Mark uh, Douglas' stuff, and, boy, I'm just going to make a million dollars. You need to grow up and be, become a better trader psychologist. And I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I know is that guy's going to blow up what little capital he has 
mm-hmm. in a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it's just, you just go, okay, uh, I'll just delete that comment and we'll just, we'll just move on. And uh, it's, it's funny. I just, I also do a, a weekly blog and I think it was either last week or the week before I did one called the angry trader. And what inspired me to do it, I was on one of the trading uh, uh, Facebook groups, just, just perusing around, seeing the comments and the questions that were being asked. And I, I tend, if I see something I can help with, I comment on it. And uh, then I come back later and I find that there's, there's some guy on there I had never heard of him. And he's like calling me a liar, this and that. And, and then I, I And here you are, one of these guys that actually knows what he's doing and teaching. And then I keep reading it down, and this guy's attacking everybody that posts anything. Like, this person can't, you know. It, it, and so, obviously, he was very angry for whatever reason. And my guess is that he's trying to trade and not doing very well. So, the only way he can justify his inadequacy is by saying, Attacking others. Attacking others, yeah. He's a bully, yeah. basically, is what happens. But I'm sure there's a lot of those kind of traders out there, too. They're just so angry, and, you know, they... They can't see. That's why I quit commenting on stuff like that because what happens is that you'll have a good many people who appreciate, you know, the wisdom and the expertise and stuff like that. But then you get these attack dogs that it's the Internet. Mm -hmm. And you just go, you know something, why am I trying to make rational sense to a person who does not want to listen to rational sense? Right. And how successful could that person ever be? With, with that kind of, you know? Well, if you listen to them, they'll tell you a great story. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you ask for audited financial statements, they're, and, you know, every trader has to produce them, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, well, the legal ones, you know? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, and I, I've, I've just come to the moment, I realize that it's just simply going to be blood. And uh, I can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And until they come, until they wake up and start coming to their senses, then um, I, I wish them well. But I, I, I um, what, what I generally see a lot of, three or four times a week I get emails saying, Randy, I wish I had listened to you. I've been reading you for seven, eight, nine years, blah, 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 blah. And I just thought you were full of it. And now I'm broke. And, you know, depending on the tell, whoa, it's a couple hundred thousand, five million, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever size there. And what they'll say is, is that I'm humbled now and I'm ready to learn to trade. Can you, can you teach me? And I'll write back saying I'm a capitalist is that I wish you well, but this is not free. And, it, and I'm not trying to be mean, right. but the, th- the truth is, is I'm not going to give away services that I know that you're going to have to have if you're going to produce success. And right. if you finally come to the moment, well, take your humility and go find something else to do because most likely you don't have what it takes to become a trader. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah. If you're not, don't try. Yeah. Don't, I mean, just, or once you discover that you haven't got it, leave. Mm-hmm. I actually had a very good trader and I, and I had, I was working with an entrepreneur who had made an enormous amount of money and he had gone through everything. He worked with me and he became consistently profitable. And then one day he said, Randy, I want to thank you. Um, this is the best money I've ever spent. What I've discovered is I'm not willing to become a good trader. I want control. Mm. And um, I was talking to a a guy, a good trader, and he said, you know something? Isn't that the greatest thing in the world? Is an entrepreneur should never have to become a trader. It's just not right. It's not right to make an entrepreneur try to become a trader. And, you know, the guy just went out and he just continued doing what he did is he bought another business, built a business up four or five years later, he sold that business for 10 times more. It just, he had a gift Mm -hmm. and uh, trading just simply, um, he fell into it because he said, you know, trading is a capital intensive business. I'm going to learn the rules of uh, of the business and uh, I know how to do this. And 
Trading is just a very, very different kind of business compared to business. All right, all right. So at any rate, I, I, there will be blood. One, one trader at a time, start saving some, some capital and making some successful stories. That would be, um, that would be a blessing. Yeah. That would be a blessing. They've got to want to do it first. We can't make them. They have to want to do it. They have to, they have to open their eyes and they have to be, they have to recognize that they're not going to get rich quick. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for being on. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun. And, uh, it, it's, I love having conversations like this and I, very few people I can have them with. So this has been a treat. Well, let's find some way of doing something together and yeah. we'll just, We'll just figure out something else. Speaking of that, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Anything you want to want to say that you know, as far as uh, you can reach me here. Yeah. Um, the main thing is my trader state of mind. Our trader state. We now own both names. Uh, trader state of mind is what we originally were. Dot com. And if you type in Randy Howell, you you're gonna you're gonna find you'll find my website. You'll find everything and there's a lot of free stuff on my website. A lot of, um, well, YouTube is accessible from my website, mm -hmm. but I also have uh, several years worth of articles that are on the website. Um, and just a lot of stuff. And you also start, you're able to start reading about um, my book. You can start reading about uh, the group course and the individual course that I offer. And, um, uh, people get on that website and spend some time. That's basically <laughs> what happens. Good. Yeah. Well, let's look forward to something in the future. And let's do. Thank you for being on, and uh, it was great. Thanks. It's been fun. Thank you a lot. Yeah, you, me too. Take care. Uh, you too.